Okay, so now we're getting into the nitty gritty. Um, we're going to do the nitty gritty, the all the reactions that are in glycolysis. Um, so, glycolysis, as it says on the tin, starts off with glucose. So this is where the glucose is getting into uh, respiration. This is where we're using it up. And the first thing that happens to glucose is that this kind of energised or activated by having ATP added to it. And that forms um, a hexose. I'm not going to name it. With two phosphates attached. So this reaction is a phosphorylation reaction because we're adding phosphate to glucose. So if I just sort of, you know, drew a little diagram of glucose. Can't, I haven't got a pen. Nope, still can't, I'll do it in pencil. There we go, little diagram of glucose. It's a little hexagonal model. What we're talking about is adding some ATP. So we've got 654... Add one there, add one there, and then you kind of, you know, you're splitting the molecule into two. So it's going to make a three carbon and a three carbon, each with a phosphate attached. What are we going to do to use that? So this is adding phosphates, is phosphorylation. phosphorylation reaction. Where are we getting that phosphate from? Well, you know, think about molecules that have got phosphate in their name. Hmm, adenosine triphosphate has phosphate in its name. So here we're putting ATP in, we're breaking that terminal, um, I want to call it a high energy bond but please don't tell a chemist, taking the phosphate out, adding it on, to our glucose and we're getting out ADP and because we're adding two phosphates on one to each side of the molecule we're going to need two ATP and we're going to get two ADP out. Lovely. So what that does um, is it kind of activates, a word I hesitate to use but it does kind of make the the hexose by um, by phosphate more likely to split and indeed it does and it splits into triodes because we were starting off with six carbons we're now down to three carbons and it's still got a phosphate attached to it so we call it triose phosphate So, so far so good, <coughs> we've added some ATP in, we've split out uh, our phosphate up, our glucose up, so that's the glycolysis bit done. Um, and then, we've got a couple of things going on. So, we're going to make our triose phosphate into pyruvate, which also has three carbons. So we're not taking any carbon away. But in order to make triose phosphate into pyruvate, what we do need to do is to take away a hydrogen. So, from each one of these triose phosphates, we're going to remove a hydrogen. And we're going to pass it to NAD to make NADH. And we're going to do that to each of them. <coughs> uh, 
And remember, of course, that this is going to the electron transport chain. If oxygen is present. If there's no oxygen present, there's no point in sending it to the electron transport chain because there's no terminal acceptor and, you know, hey, nothing's going to happen to it. Incidentally, in that process of removing the hydrogen from triose phosphate, we're also going to release from that reaction enough energy to make two ATP. So this ATP production, because if you think about it, what we're putting in there is ADP plus phosphate, so it's a phosphorylation reaction again. And we're going to need two of those in brackets. We call that substrate level phosphorylation. So this is called substrate level because this doesn't involve electron transfer, it doesn't involve uh, chemiosmosis and it doesn't involve oxygen being the terminal acceptor. So if you're using oxygen and the electron transfer chain, that sort of phosphorylation making ATP is called oxidative. But this hasn't involved any of that, so it's made by substrate level. So overall, from one molecule of glucose, so this is per molecule of glucose, we have made four ATP and used two. So overall, or net, so whenever we're talking about the gain of uh, ATP from glycolysis, we're looking at that overall gain. It's really important, net gain of two ATP. So, there are some other things that you need to know about glycolysis. So you need to know its location. So this happens in the cytoplasm. You need to know that there's no oxygen use. And you need to know the enzyme dehydrogenase. Where is that used? It's used here. It's removing the hydrogen away. And the most important bit, net gain of 2 ATP. So that's sort of glycolysis all happening in the cytoplasm. Um, in the next video we'll move on to the mitochondrion and look at the link reaction uh, and possibly Krebs. We'll see how the time goes.